apologies for my recent hiatus. 2021 is shaping up to be quite the year. Anyhow, we're looking at getting back into uh, regular videos. So either once a fortnight or once a week, however I can manage my time the best. But today, today, we are looking at patchworm cleaning kits. So these are going to be available from airriflesluggsaustralia.com. So if you want one, skip on over there. They were nice enough to send me this one for free so I could uh, have a play with it and uh, show you guys how it all works. And uh, we are going to um, run through my impact because my impact has been sitting dormant in the safe for a month and a half now. And um, we might also have a crack at the 308, my Howa 308 with my lovely element helix on top. Uh, just to see how it goes with a uh, centerfire barrel. So, let's get to it. So this is the kit that I received. We've got some 7 8 inch patches uh, from patchworm.com and we have the weed whacker style cleaning kit. Um, it comes with all of these little badoobas in here. Let's crack it open and have a looky-loo. We've got our string, lovely. As you can see on the string, here, there is the uh, little string stopper that uh, catches these little different sized for different caliber cleaning heads. So basically what you do is you consult your little legend here, and I'm gonna be cleaning 22 today, first up. So we'll, uh, we'll use the white one. We'll pop this one open. Pop this little white one out, try not to spill them everywhere with my big stupid fingers. Yeah, we're spilling them everywhere. All right, so 22 is white. I'll put all of these back in here for later. This is quite a versatile little kit too. It's um, small and compact, and as you can see, it goes all the way from uh, this particular one. They are available in 0.177 as well if you need that but that's a different string. But it goes all the way from 20 cal up to uh, 50 cal and 12 gauge with an open cylinder. So it's quite a versatile little kit and it's very light as well. I've typically used a um, standard uh, M16 cleaning kit in the past and uh, they, you know, they're quite heavy. So this would probably be a nicer thing to take in the bush if you're doing a bit of walking. So we've just threaded it over the end, sliding it all the way down to the stopper like so there you go and on top of that we are going to use some patches um, these ones have already got ballistol soaked onto them so we'll try that I've never used ballistol before I typically use um, something like this like a military CLP in a big squeedy squirty bottle like that um, or a solvent like um, something like jib Jib is a pretty aggressive solvent, so if you are using it around O-rings, it's probably a good idea to take the barrel off the gun if that is something that you can do, so that you don't get uh, solvents on your O-rings uh, any more than, than you have to. Usually, these gun cleaning solvents, um, they're all different, so I can't really tell you if yours is going to chew up your uh, O-rings or not, but whatever. Use whatever you think is gonna work, and uh, today we're gonna to try with the ballistol patches. Now, crack this open and have a look. Oh yeah, there's a fair few in here too. Nice. We're just gonna squeeze them through. Make sure that they're nice and evenly coated. Oh, look at that. Big difference already. Cool, cool. And Peel one of them off. Now the end of this is quite pointy. Let's see if we can get it to focus up nicely. Ow, just shanked myself with it. <laughs> Any hoozles, uh, it's pointy and you're gonna drive it straight through the middle of the patch, like so, without stabbing yourself. There we go, and we'll pull you all the way down so that it sits on top of the stopper like that and now this little stopper is um, it's got perfect tolerance for 22 so it's going to push that 
little pad outwards into the barrel. So, and it will uh, squeeze it on through and give it a good soak. We'll pull it through nice and slowly so that it gets time to do its job. And uh, we'll see what, uh, what comes out. Because I haven't cleaned the barrel on the FX for a while and it's probably going to be pretty gross. Um, and it'll be good to get it clean because I've got lots of different ammo reviews to do coming up. H&N slugs and um, FX hybrid 22s mostly. So good times ahead, good times ahead. So in the interest of not exposing any of my O-rings to um, any type of oils or solvents whatsoever, I'm going to just pull the liner out instead of um, taking the whole barrel out and um, I'm going to give it a good clean like that and then I'm going to put it back in so that I won't have to worry about anything dribbling back into, uh, into the gun after I'm gone if I miss anything because usually the process I follow is um, wet patches go through until they start coming back clean and then dry patches go through afterwards to dry out and um, just leave like the tiniest little film of uh, oil on the inside of the barrel to prevent corrosion while it's in storage. Um, and then and then that's that. You don't really have to worry too much about um, oil dribbling back in. But uh, as far as any any gun with O-rings that uh, might contact your solvents, it's just better to, if, if you can, just avoid um, having those two things come together. So the process for removing this um, liner is pretty simple. I'm just gonna pop this uh, fake shroud off gently, ever so gently screwed into the uh, nut that retains the liner. There go, slider off. This is the Australian version, so there's no barrel nut on the end that diffuses the air, like the muzzle brake that goes inside this to make it quiet. This is just a hollow aluminium tube that screws straight onto there. And then, I believe we are after a 10 mil. I'm just gonna use my little shifter here. Sacrilege, I know. Unscrew, unscrew, unscrew. Now I'm just going to use this piece of leather that I've got just to protect the liner so it doesn't end up getting scratched because uh, they, they grab in there pretty good with the o-rings that you have lined along the side so I'm just going to use a set of pliers to get it started nice and easy wiggle it back and forth and one o-ring this really is one of my favorite features of the FX barrels but do have a bit of gunk in there. Maybe, maybe I'm blowing a bit of water through my gun. I might have to uh, revisit my my filling process. Put a new water filter on it or something. I think that might require some further investigation at a later date. That's definitely going to need to be looked at. <laughs> but here we are. So basically, all you need to do now is feed feed your string all the way through to the end so that it pokes on out the end like so make sure that it's lined up nicely I'm going to push it in a little bit at the back here just to make sure that it's in there and I'm not trying to pull it on a weird angle and then we're going to run it through nice and slow Ooh, it's got some nice bite to it I can feel it really pushing out on the edges of the barrel this is gonna be disgusting. This is like, my barrel looks like a hole in the ground at the moment. Here we go. Whoa. <laughs> That's nasty. So now, just to make the best use of the patch, I'm gonna pull it out, I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna use the other side of the patch. Poking on through. Feed it in a little bit to make sure it's lined up. And pull in the straightest possible line, nice and slow. That's rank, man. So, I'm gonna keep doing this until these start coming back clean and uh, we'll see how many it takes. All right, so as you can see here, I have done eight pull-throughs, obviously two per uh, patch. So pull the patch through, flip it over, pull it back again. And you can see as we're going along, we're getting progressively cleaner and cleaner. Um, the discoloration on this bottom one is very minor now. So it's sort of more noticeable on this one than it is on this one. And it's, uh, yeah, seems like primarily the first huge amount of gunk comes out on the first four pull-throughs on these two top patches. And then 
once we start getting down to the, uh, the real fine nitty gritty stuff, there just isn't that much left in there. So now I'm going to switch over to the, um, the dry patches and we're gonna chuck some dry patches through it and dry out the inside of the barrel and see what else comes out. Okay, so here we go. We can see that um, I've started pulling through with these dry patches. I decided to do four again, and you can see it pulled most of the oil out with the first one. Obviously I used that patch twice, so it's kind of a little bit soaked through. A little bit less on this second one, and you can see that well-defined star pattern happening in there. So um, the, the little cleaning head is doing a really good job of pushing that um, cotton or whatever that stuff's made of, that little patch out into the rifling and getting right in there and getting all that gunk out. And then you can see down here uh, on this one, very, very much less little tiny little faint star marks and then even less on this last one. So we're pretty much done now. So you're looking at four or five patches for a uh, 22 caliber air gun barrel, um, but most of the work is done uh, in the first two or three patches. Uh, so yeah, and, and it seems like this kit would uh, last you a fair while because uh, I don't really clean my barrels that often. I like to leave them seasoned. Um, but yeah, I think if you, uh, even if you were a regular cleaner of your barrels, if you're a bit of a perfectionist, you would probably uh, get a fair bit of life out of this. And then obviously once you've, uh, once you've used them all up, you just buy a big refill pack and uh, soak them yourself in whatever um, ballistol or um, cleaning solvent it is that you choose to use. So there you have it, air gun barrel cleaned. Uh, I'm definitely gonna have to uh, pull that bad boy apart. I suspect if that discoloration on the liner is there, I've probably got a little bit of water in my system and I would suspect that there would be an O-ring uh, down near the breech that's letting that go past as well. So we might uh, do a video some other time pulling it apart because I do have, I do have this here rebuild kit from Herman's Guns and it looks like it's uh, very well labeled and uh, pretty simple to use. So happy chappy, let's, uh, we'll do that at some point in the near future. But for now, let's see how she goes with uh, going down a centerfire barrel. So this beautiful vision of heaven is my Hauer 1500 in 308. We've got the Element Optics Helix on top Detachable 10 round magazine, looking good. Love the colors. Magpul bipod. And we are obviously not gonna take the barrel out of this bad boy, because that is well beyond my skill to heal. We need elvish medicine. There we go. All right. So, bolt out. Nothing in the magazine, nothing in the chamber. Happy days. And we're looking at red. 308 to 0.348 is the red one. So we'll put our white one away and we'll chuck a 30 cal one on there and see how we go. I don't know how you're gonna go if you're color blind. I'm guessing that uh, you can just lay them out and sort of tell the difference. <laughs> as long as you're not putting red on green, which is exactly what we're doing. So <laughs> good times. I'm going to use a ballistol patch. Now, I haven't fired this barrel yet. Um, so if anything comes out, I can't remember, I'm pretty sure I've pulled it through a few times, so it should be clean. But uh, if anything else comes out, it's just packing grease to protect it while it's being shipped. I'm very much looking forward to getting out to the range and shooting this bad boy, because it's been a long time coming. And I really want to see how the uh, Element Helix fares with a dirty, great, heavy-duty centerfire. So we're just going to feed you in there like that. Line it up and pull it through. Lovely, a little bit of rust. Probably didn't put enough lube in there last time. I must have dried it out too much. I was planning on going and uh, going to the range a couple of months ago, so I must have forgotten to 
put my oily film back on the inside of the barrel. Not the end of the world though, I will be running this barrel in very thoroughly, so I suspect that my 165 grain soft points will definitely clean that out. <laughs> and these barrels, you do actually kind of have to run them in, they don't really uh, come as finished as they could be because it is a very low budget barrel in action. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll keep pulling them on through until they start coming back clean. Alright, so that is the schmutz from inside my neglected 308 barrel. So you can see a little bit of rusty shite, less rusty shite, even less. And by the time we get down to uh, pull through number four, we're starting to just look like, uh, you know, kind of gungy oil. Then less gungy oil, and then just oil. So not bad at all, not bad at all. With a uh, with a, a gun like this one, with a, a harder core barrel, I guess, you have um, you don't really have to worry so much about uh, scratching up the inside of it. So if you want to, you can run it through with a ball brush first, correctly suited for the caliber, and um, you'll probably minimize the use of these patches. You might get away with having a few less. It'll pull more shite out before in the first couple of uh, rounds, and then you will be able to save yourself the trouble. It looks like there's about 12 ballistol patches in this kit uh, so it would be a good idea I think to make sure that you invest in getting the big 500 pack of patches maybe even get a couple of them so you don't have to worry about running out and then you can just squirt your uh, squirt your juices into here and let them soak and just have them soaking all the time in whatever it is that you want to soak them in and then they'll be ready to go so you'll always have at least enough to do one or two good cleans in your kit and remember that uh, that this is this is how big the kit is. It's it's tiny, it's very light, and it's very versatile. So you can do all of your guns uh, with this one cleaning kit, except for 177, for which you will need a different string. But uh, they are available too, and um, yeah, it's good. I like it. I like it a lot. One consideration that you might want to think about, though, is uh, having some pull-through rods as a backup because if you say you double feed an air gun or um, something like that, you get an obstruction in the barrel, it would be a good idea to have some solid brass rods as well. Brass because it doesn't, uh, it's not gonna scratch up the inside of your barrel. It's a bit softer than the barrel material. Uh, but that would be really the, uh, the only thing that I would think about needing, you know? So a very light, very effective little piece of kit. I like it a lot. All right, well that's us for today. So if you want to get yourself one of these mad little patchworm cleaning kits, go to airrifleslugsaustralia.com.au and link will be in the description. Tell them your good buddy Uncle Hodge sent you. They will also be importing Nielsen Specialty Ammo Slugs. So if you are chasing some really wacky ammo that you want to try and do some really high powered air gunning at really long ranges, that's a good place to start. Uh, shipment should be due soon in the next couple of months. We'll see, shipping is mad. 2021 is just 2020 again. So whatever, goodbye.